All Eyes on Fishing with Mitch Peterson, Brad Qualley, and Josh Sheldon. Welcome to the next level. Hey everybody, welcome to All Eyes on Fishing, the next level. Go ahead, guys. No, no, we're not, we don't need we're to not do it this time. No, it's the uh, next level. The next level. So, <laughs> <laughs> I got it in there. Yeah. We just got to get it. So we I feel better. Do you feel better? <clears throat> I'm ready. I'm, I'm ready. You guys look like idiots, but as long as you feel good. <laughs> so <laughs> here's the deal. No, he's not very nice. <laughs> so hardcore tonight. tonight we got together and talking about we're going to do some podcasts. And we spent about an hour and a half bullshitting talking about everything but <clears throat> yes so we're finally going to get out the podcast and we decided that uh one of the things uh kind of late fall that's it's really good uh, you can go catch fish still shallow still trolling but we're going to really focus on on vertical jigging yeah. and what that entails what types of baits equipment line location books we're going to try to cover a lot of that stuff during uh this time of year uh, we're not too far from ice on some places. As a matter of fact, on some guys are ice fishing. I saw one of the, the yeah. No, there's there's some dudes in northern Minnesota and some guys here in Colorado. Yes, they I'm found ice. Aware, but, well, well, and you in vertical jig is not just fall. It's going to be all through the winter. It's going to you can do it in the spring, especially with uh, live bait, which we'll cover. No, I'm just and saying this time of year when can they be start a great to go way. A little bit deeper. Oh yeah, you know. Uh, but this time of year, it can be really good. I mean, it could be good any time, but this is just a great tactic too. If you're not, if you're not out at night trolling or casting from shore, right. uh, stick baits, um, and you have a boat and you're able to get out there, what are some things that you can do to, to hopefully put you on some, some fish? So I think we got to start talking kind of what, um, uh, what equipment you need first. I mean, this is going to be from a boat, right? So, yeah, I mean, it's definitely, well, or, or a kayak or float tube or something like that. You know, I mean, whatever. It's, sure, something so out, out on the water. You have to be out shore. on the water. You yeah. can't do this from shore. And, um, you know, and, and I think the equipment thing ranges all the way from boat to what your boat's rigged with as far as uh, electronics mm -hmm. to rod reel line, that whole deal. And, um, and I think if we start with uh, the, the basics rod reel and line, I know the three of us all do it different. So, what what are you guys go ahead go first and then I'll because I'm different than than you two. I'm gonna run a spinning reel, you know. Right. <clears throat> I'm gonna do a spinning reel, um, for sure. What kind of rod? Um, I'm still using my typical jigging rod that I would use during the regular season, and that's just a six foot six, uh, fast action. Yeah. Yeah. Medium, medium light. What? Medium. Medium. Yep. Kind of line. Um, you know, this time, of, this time of year, a lot of times I'm running fire line with, uh, and then I'll do a floral leader. What, what pound? <clears throat> so my fire line, I, I love Jeez, running. I feel like I'm like, like I'm an well, attorney. So Mr. Quali. <laughs> yes. Well, I don't want to give it. I mean, I figured, geez, you know, I got to give you some talk time, right? Because you guys are bitching that. I well, whatever you. Brad's saying right now, mm -hmm. I'm just agreeing with him. That's what he I, is, your this head is head what head. I used yeah. to. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it was ten, funny on the, ten, four, on the last four, podcast yeah. we did, I was listening to it when I was uh, editing it. Mm hmm. And it made me laugh because you guys were talking about stuff and, and it was, and it was obvious you two were looking at each other, but we had to re, I had to remind you. Yeah, they can't see you. Yeah, hey, <laughs> can't see hey, you. I'm nuts. I can't see you. Yeah. <laughs> so no, I'm looking at Mitch like if he wants to jump in because I know we use the same stuff. Yeah. So we're going to use that 10, 10, four fire line crystal. That's what we use. So 10 pound diameter. Okay. Four pound or 10 pound test, four pound diameter. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to put on a th about a three foot, uh, fluorocarbon leader. And I always use that, the P-Line or the Berkeley 100% fluorocarbon. Okay. So, and typically I'm using, I use a little bit heavier. A lot of times during general, and it's because of blade baits, if I'm going to use a blade bait. We can get into that more, but I use a heavier type uh, floral just because of how it, it, it you don't get that uh, that hook, that center hook grab. And a blade bait. Well, we can talk about that, but I'm using I'm using a fluorocarbon leader. Mm -hmm. Same. Oh yeah. Yep. How about you, Josh? I know you're gonna <laughs> see. I knew it's it, Mr. Agreeable. Oh yeah. Well, it, 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 yeah. everything yeah, he was perfect. saying, I'm like, yeah, that's what I would use every time. Hey, I did. I just noticed this. He's got his slippers on. I do, dude. Tonight. These are like, bad. Oh my god. I got those for my birthday. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We're in let's, all I let's want. Let's shut it down. And he's got black socks with slippers on. Yeah. 
get those things off. We'll come back and start this over. Yeah, we got it. Yeah. Because that. <laughs> These babies I'm rolling all winter now. <laughs> <laughs> those are his new podcast shoes. Yeah. This is Maybe that will be the picture of the this next level. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <Of> my slipper. <laughs> a bathrobe and a pipe. He's going to look That's like. Good. You know, when I was telling him what, what line I was doing, I could. Josh just can't help himself. He stared at my slipper and he's like, oh, I can't well, I wait for an opening. Like, I can't wait. Shoes? Like, what I can't wait those? to say something. That's great. No, I was looking. I was, I was trying to figure it out, but yeah, those are okay. pretty fancy dancy there, buddy. <laughs> well, real real quick, back to the equipment things that you you brought up, Brad, which I back, love to them all. Back, to back, back to the fishing. Back to fishing. We'll get back to your slippers in a bit. But <laughs> comfy. I, uh, I tell you what, when we when we switched over to Fireline years ago <clears throat> and tried it like the first time or whatever, I, I was sold the first time out on the boat. Especially oh, and, vertical jigging. Well, and what it was, it was vertical jigging. And the reason I was sold was because not only could you feel every little peck, you know, from a fish, a real light bite. Um, we could, as we were jigging this real bouldery, big boulders, you know, four or five foot diameter boulders, you, you could literally feel your lead head jig scrape up the side yes. of the boulder. And then drop and, it down into a hole. And, or... well, and I tell you what, I was like, oh my God, I can feel what I'm dragging it up against, you know, up and down, not drag it on the ground. And it was like, okay, th- this, this stuff is, is yeah. awesome. Very oh, sensitive. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So you, but both you are, are on the spinning, spinning yeah. rods now. So I do, um, I like the, um, day like casting. A, yeah. Yeah. But flip and switch, I'd mm-hmm. like to be able to use it with one hand, right? So mm-hmm. you, you can engage it and disengage it with one hand. Sure. Um, I think that's much easier because then I can actually go two if I want to. Um, two rods, one off each side of the boat. If I, especially, you know, if you're in the front, more or less. And then, um, uh, I use, uh, you know, a, a, about a six foot six, whatever, because those rods kind of come in different lengths when you flip to the uh, casting rods, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and I actually don't mind one a touch longer than the six six. Uh, I like that that little bit longer tip. I like that that feel. Because a lot of times what we'll do, especially when we vertical fish, we'll kind of vertical troll, right? Where we, we move the boat along real slow. At, at like point, point two. Point two, point mm-hmm. three. And that little bit longer can, I can kind of, I can, I can let that, that vertical kind of go back. I can point it back a little bit, you know, I can sweep it up a little bit. Um, but I also like the, um, I like anything that's the sensitive. So Fireline braid, um, mm-hmm. I've used, um, the different braids as well, which I, I really like because, sure. Those also work well if you're going to use your. I use the same rods I use for bottom bouncing, uh, not all bottom bouncing, but they're kind of my backup bottom bouncing rods, I guess I'd say. Um, so I use that, and I do, and I go, but I go heavier. Um, I will probably go with the 15, just because we do fish a lot of rocks when we go vertical, and you know the braid, the the fire line, the super lines, they're all such a small diameter; it doesn't really matter, anyways. Um, so I will go heavier so we can get it out of those rocks because I mean, let's face it, if you're going to start fishing the, um, lipless crankbaits or the, uh, you know, shivers or, or jigging wraps, they're kind of pricey. They are pricey. And, and mm-hmm. so I, you know, I'll bend a hook getting it out of there. I'm, I'm all good with that. So I'll do that and I will do the probably the 15 or even 20 pound floral. Um, like you said, just for the same reason of A, it's invisible. So who cares? And B, it, um, it does keep your, your line, the stiffer line, the hook doesn't, come up on those glide baits and, and catch it and, and the lipless the lipless will catch it bad too <clears throat> yes. right mm-hmm. so all of a sudden you'll feel your lipless down mm-hmm. there working and, and then nothing right yeah. you don't feel that vibration because it, it hooked itself so the stiffer line will help with that um and the sensation of course is always the good part um so i like that as well mm-hmm. um but i i really do like that that so you can just fish it with the one hand right no and, and that that is a good point if especially if um, if you're up at the front of the boat driving, you can easily run. And if it's, you have a foot, like a foot control, it's a little harder when you're using a hand control because yeah. you need three hands. Right. But, um, those are good. I've had, yeah, that's tough. <laughs> that's what I'm going to do. Yeah. I'm yeah, going to get a third, a third hand. hand. Yeah. I got a third but leg, I mean, but so, not a third hand. So, yeah. <laughs> so it makes it a little bit tougher, but I'll tell you what, I find myself, um, I, I went to those. I had four of those yeah. uh, a few years ago. I went to them because I liked your setup. Yeah. But, uh, the drawback for me, and, and it's, it's a great present. It's a great way to do mm-hmm. it, but, um, 
I also, when I'm vertical jigging, every once in a while, I like to cast it out yeah. and work it back, too. Well, and you, don't you so, hold your finger on the line? You like doing that, too, don't you? Both not, you? not vertical. Not, not vertical. vertical. No, no. Just, so, just Lindy Riggin. Just Lindy yeah. yeah, so I like casting it, too. So I'll vertical jig for five, ten minutes, and then I'll cast for four or five yeah. casts and see if I can find a pot of fish yeah. that we're not on top of that are active, and then I'll go back to vertical jigging. It's a little harder to do that with the flip and switch because you just don't get the amount of castability right. but i understand completely what you're talking about because you can act it's hard to work two spinning rods and constantly be just working it right off the bottom right yeah. you know i mean but I mean, that's the pros know, and cons you know well but, and, there, and, and, and so let's talk pros and cons line real quick because we i know we all like the the no stretch super braid something like that mm -hmm. um but if you do watch tv or listen to other people guys like al linder they love using mono mm -hmm. he is a, and, and a lot of guys have switched because linder has suggested that sure and uh and they like it too right because they do like that little bit of shock absorption they like that um and the thing to think about and keep in mind when you are picking a line that uh super line is is no stretch like we've said but that also equates into when you are um you know uh doing your jigging and it, it, very little movement makes that jig go a lot yeah. so with the mono it you know the mono you you can work it a little bit more aggressively and you're not getting as much of a reaction mm -hmm. underneath the water from your your jig or your grub or live bait or whatever you end up using mm -hmm. but with the fire line or the braid i mean i find myself having to remind myself um especially if i'm not getting bit hey a, a, a little less you know instead of a uh eight or nine inch you know raise like a snap uh how about just a two or three just yeah. a quick pop yeah. but i have noticed if I do that with the longer rod, it seems like I get a bit better. Mm -hmm. um, I think that like seven foot rod. Sure. Um, it typically when we're when we're doing vertical jigging, usually we're finding them a, a, in the deeper this time you deeper part. Yeah, deeper water. But mm -hmm. deeper can be twenty feet. Yeah. So well, I mean, not okay, super deep. But well, but you know, okay, so when I'm when I when we start marking fish, if we're working a road bed and the road bed is at seventeen and it drops down to twenty eight, yeah. a lot of times we're not working the top of the road. We're gonna work that seventeen base, to twenty eight, yeah. that base. So and I do like the mono. Um, if you are going to be fishing a little bit shallower, the problem is, is once you start getting into that, to me anyway, and you, I want you guys to chime in on this. Once you start hitting that 25, 30, 50 foot to where you're jigging with mono, the problem is, is that stretch, is that sens sensitivity. So when you feel that bite, it's, it's almost like they bite it. It takes a little bit longer to get up that rod to you, to you feeling it. And then for you to set the hook because of that stretch, it takes a little bit, a higher hook set. And you're, you might only be a half a second later on it, right. but I, I, I feel like when it starts getting deeper, the super lines outfish those dramatically because right. it's so fast. Oh, right. well, on top of that, sometimes you, depending on how deep you're fishing with mono, sometimes you can't even feel the bites. I know. And you, but you could with fire line, the same bite. Yeah. If you couldn't fill with mono, you most likely you can still fill with the fire line. Well, and, you, and that's the thing. I don't, yes. you know, vertical jigging. How many fish do we miss? Oh, I mean, I, I hate to I hate to spill the beans, but quite a few. You mm -hmm. know, if I if I can, I'm always trying to work on increasing my hook set percentage, mm -hmm. right? And vertical jigging's the probably the most frustrating type of fishing where where you miss them. You know, right. you get that bite and you're you're middle of talking to your buddy, and I'll say, oh, whoa, yeah. oh, I missed one. Yeah. Dang it! You know, yeah. I got jaked. Mm -hmm. And I it, for me, being the old slow reaction guy that I am, oh yeah, I, I'll take any little advantage I can. And I, I think you hit the nail on the head. Not only do you feel things better and more sensitivity, it, it's faster. You it know, you, faster. you can, you, it helps my reaction time. Yeah. Well, and the reason you're, and the reason we miss those, I mean, <clears throat> it, it, it is associated with the line, but a lot of the time we miss them because um, they're pinning it. You know, we know those fish pin those baits to the bottom. And so we're especially missing especially the jigging wraps. Yeah, especially yeah. like those glide baits, right? They will pin it to the, the bottom. Puppet men, oh, the jigging wraps, anything like and that. And you, you, <clears throat> you know, and, and so you're you're feeling it get pinned, but they're not. It's not actually in their mouth. So when you pull it up, you're you know, in, unless one of those hooks catch them on the way up, you're you're not really missing the bite because it wasn't a bite. You're you're just feeling the pin. Feels like a bite. You're bringing it up, and it goes, you know, and it pulls, slides out from underneath 
their mouth that's got a pin on the and bottom. And I don't know how, especially fishing those glide baits, you can barely look at them without getting hooks on I, I get my hands come out bloody every time I <laughs> fish those damn things for a day. But Well, th- think about it. When If if it's on the, say, say you drop it down and on the bottom, you know, your your troubles are on the bottom. No, it's a Pretty single much. hook on the back and the treble on the bottom. Yep, yep, you're right. So there is that still that single hook on the back that's up. But you know that that's the thing. The fish gets on top of it. Well, he's on top of you know he's on top of the bait. It's like not, nosing it down. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, we've caught a ton of fish doing that. Sometimes you'll end up foul hooking them because of that, right? But you mm-hmm. can. I think we can all agree um, there is a place for mono. But I would say that if you're going to jig mono. Um, Especially in the fall when you're probably going to end up being able to find them a little bit deeper. Probably want to go some sort of super line or braid. Something that has a little bit. Yeah. I, and, and I've watched the episode. Yeah, I know what you're where, talking about. Um, you know, where um, they're talking about using mono and stuff like that. And um, it, it, he he likes to work it. He works it a little more aggressive. He does. You know, and, and he likes to do that kind of like we're talking about. That's that almost like the the troll vertical Mm -hmm. you know he goes about 0.4 and he likes to bring it back and then he likes to sweep it up and bounce it forward and let it glide and keep going and cover water and if you're going to do that you know and and he's not super deep when he does it if you're going to do that then yeah i could see mono being a pretty good Mm -hmm. you know pretty good line for that um but you know and and actually with the new information uh, that we saw this year with the um uh, fluorocarbon and how much stretch it actually has, floral wouldn't be a bad application for that either because it stretches almost more than mono, I think, is what it, we found out. Yeah, I don't know if I believe that. Some stuff, you, I was started reading on that, and I don't know. To me, it seems like it has less stretch, but it well, depends on I what you're... Well, I watched that test. I mean, <clears throat> our, you know, our, I actually... Uh, Al Norrecker did it I know. from Casking, mm-hmm. and Casking is one of our sponsors for CWT, and um, and Al did the whole thing with their floral, which I know. we give out as our one of our prizes. Mm-hmm. And um, is that is that the way they manufacture it? Stretch your floral though too. Because, well, he did it with other fl- other florals too. Yeah, so yeah. he did all he did several uh, of the you know popular ones, and I don't remember what brands he had, but popular ones. Sure. And, yeah, uh, I don't know that the jury's the still out on that for me because it feels like to me maybe because I end up stepping up and test pound test with the floral when I'm doing well, this. But we're using such a short amount, even if it did stretch, we really wouldn't notice too much. Yeah, that's that's probably why. Or like a yeah. liter liter application. Yeah, you're you probably not wouldn't feel that. No, I mean, that's you, you do why. three feet, and I think probably most of the time, <clears> if we do start out with three feet. feet I end up fishing about twelve inches of a liter. Maybe, Sometimes, yeah. Maybe fourteen. If you break inches. off, yeah. I mean, yeah. you break off once, and or or you you switch right. You tie a different one on. You know that three feet goes away pretty fast. So, yeah. um, so I I mean I I'm just thinking out loud because I do like using those flip and switch, and you know maybe that would be a good application because I I don't think the floral, um, the floral I think is tougher to deal with on a spinning reel than it is those oh for you know, sure mm-hmm. bait casting type reels. So maybe that is a good, good application. Yeah. I don't know. I, I haven't I'm, done that, so I don't know. I, yeah, I mean, I I'm just thinking. I don't think. Well, you know, maybe I switch one over and give it a whirl and see how it does. But, no. um, you know, that I think you definitely. Uh, but he is definitely more aggressive. I think you can be more aggressive with your your uh, jigging and your jigging action and your sweeping or your vertical or whatever if you do have a little bit stretchier line. Sure. Um, well, and then also what kind of rod was he using? Was he using a little bit softer rod, not a faster rod, too? I, I don't know that. I, can't I don't remember, remember what he said. It was it, it was pretty basic. You know what I mean? I mean it, it looked like, like it was uh, bending a little bit more, so it could have been a it could have been medium a, light. I don't know. I don't know. I well, thought he did medium action fast. I, I tell you what, I, I'd prefer <laughs> to catch a fish on mono. I like how it feels fighting a fish. Doesn't yeah. matter how big it is, little fish, big fish. I, I'd take mono at that point. Right. But the real reason that I like the fire line and these super lines for vertical jigging because it helps me get the fish on the hook. Yes. And it doesn't really matter about how it feels to fight the uh, fish no. until you catch it. I agree. We started so. talking a little bit about, <clears throat> we've brought it up. We've talked about glide baits and, and things like that. Let's talk about bait selection. Mitch, if you were going to go out and we're talking, um, we're going to fish a deeper hole, you know, let, let's mm-hmm. say in that 30 foot range or off that break that we talked about 17, 20, the fish are at 28. Um, what what's your what would be your top two that you're probably going to start with? Um, jigging ramp, and you know, kind of kind of depending on the lake more. I think mm-hmm. um, I'm a sucker for just a ball head jig, yeah, a lead head jig and a, and a minnow. Um, you know, fall crawlers and you know leeches aren't around really anymore. 
Um, but there's there's plastics you can use and stuff. But I, what I about just, a I like a ball head. Yeah, cast masters. Mm-hmm. You know, like like ice fishing. I've got, I always got. I usually have a cast master and a, a, just a, a dead stick with a hook mm-hmm. with with a minnow on it. Yeah. Um, kind of in the fall. Yeah, I'm I'm I, cast masters work just fine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, what about you, Josh? I, I, you're probably a glide bait too, right? Or no? Oh yeah, I, I, I'm absolutely going to put on a glide bait. I know a lot of guys would put on a blade bait. Blade, right? yep. that's a big one. Um, but I got to tell you guys, I, I am a spooner too. I mean, I really like doing the spoons, especially this time of year into winter. Man, some um, of those spoons are like ounce and a half. Oh spoons, yeah, yeah. And I, and I got to tell you, the uh, the Bass Pro Strata spoon, which looks like nothing. Right, it looks like a. It looks like nothing. nothing. I mean, really, it, <laughs> you're it, looking at this thing on no. And one of my favorite spoons. It works. Favorite good. spoons of all time. It the uh, the other one, uh, the one that we use with McConaughey. What is that one? The flea. Uh, the flea flicker. Is is that what it is? No, flea fly. No. Flea fly. Yeah. Flea, flea fly. fly. Love those two. Yeah. I mean, they yeah. have a great action. Um, and so I like those, but I I am really kind of getting into the different lipless crankbaits too. Yeah. Um, I have done pretty well on the lipless crankbaits. T- you know, you feel that that rip, right? That mm-hmm. you know. So you really kind of have to tone it down because uh, you get kind of carried away. But um, man, I have caught some decent fish with just very short pops with those. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've got I've got a perch colored uh, chubby darter that I use every year. Oh yeah, and I don't think I've ever caught a fish on it. No, nope. really, it I'm, sure looks cool. It looks cool. It looks great. I, w- I want to bite it, so I, yeah. I give it to them, but they don't want it. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, yeah. I, those, I, I guess, I would be a. Uh, I would set up three rods on the front, and one would be a. It would be a um, jig and wrap, or, um, and probably a some sort of spoon, whatever you know we went for, and then mm. lipless. Yeah, uh, and if it wasn't jig and wrap, it would be a, a shiver. But one of those type of uh, yeah. glide baits, because I mean, you know, like you said, I love fishing the vertical. But if if it starts to, you know, if we're just not getting anything and we need to search a little, you're going to cast a shiver. Yep, I like to drop it down, put on a shiver or, or a flicker, and I mean a, a shiver minnow or a um, jig and wrap because I like casting the jig and wraps too. And um, you know, start looking with those, and then. Uh, Man, if you do get on a school of fish, I, I've noticed if you get on a good when school you get of on a man, it's that popping. Limpless is just, I mean, that will really bring those fish if, if when the other <laughs> stuff doesn't. Yeah, and it doesn't matter what time of year. I mean, I've taken trips up to McConaughey uh, in the middle of, uh, well, actually, right around now or later, and um, boy, had those lipless just produce when other stuff doesn't. So, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, yeah we should be going to McConaughey right now. Yeah, let's do that. Pack that up. would be a perfect tomorrow. I know, right? <laughs> tomorrow. Tomorrow. Let's do it. We're going. Yeah, I'm sick. I got a COVID 18 days. <laughs> yeah. Whatever. Yeah. We're yeah. going to 14 days. I'm, yeah. I'm going to quarantine at Lake McConaughey. Yeah. We're, quarantine. We're, we're all together in this podcast. Yeah. I think we're exposed. We can only be together. Yeah. <laughs> what do you guys want to do? Let's go fishing. Let's go. We're, we're just doing, doing our part and keeping everybody that's right. safe. That's, that's right. right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but no, I'm, I'm for that. I just got the boat uh, tuned up. So let's go do it. That'd be perfect. Done. So that'd be perfect. Done. It's on the way. You pick up the boat. It is. You know, we got his personal phone. I got to run it. But I think I. You know what? I, I, I think the glide baits are definitely, I like the jig and wrap. Two years ago, I started fishing the puppet minnows. You um, have had good success with those Dude, puppets. yes, I have. And they're they're very similar to them, but they, mm-hmm. I mean. fatter or something. Yeah, well, they're, the, the, the top of them is, is actually, a, it's fatter on the bottom, but yeah. skinnier up on top. It's almost like a triangle. You like a, yeah, mm-hmm. like a pyramid. But, yeah, no, I've had a lot of good luck. They're a little bit cheaper, but the only problem. They were popular, though, because they were hard to find. They are hard to find. And so the problem with the puppet minutes, minnows, though, is the fin on the back is not very, it's not manufactured well. It's not a long lasting bait. Oh, but do those break yeah, off? They break off. Yeah. So um, you're going to get a season out of them, maybe. Yeah. You know, where the jigging wraps, you can have them for four, five, six oh, years. I have you know what I mean? Them. Whatever. They, and I, I, I don't know why. And you can't glue them back on. It just doesn't oh, no. work. I, you know what? And, and I can't remember what it was, but I saw a thing on Facebook just a few weeks ago where a dude came up with what he does to replace the fins. I saw that too. Uh, I can't think of what it was though. It was cheap and easy, and like yeah. he said, works great. He just keeps a bunch of them in the boat and hmm. done. But I can't remember. what Yeah, it was. I saw that too. I'll have to try to look for it. If any of the yeah. listeners out there sh- send that to us at all eyes on fishing at gmail dot com because that would be something good to share on our. Yeah, uh, our Facebook page because it, it it did look like a good tip. I don't know if yeah. it works, yeah. but it sure looks like well, it. And I then like, I'm I'm I, pretty much a uh, the next thing is I'm probably going to go with that XPS that blade bait. 
I do you like the blade bait. Yeah, and you, the Bass, Bass Pro, Pro one is a good one. It's a really good yeah. blade bait. Yeah, that, the, and the heat and and you know and so the the blade baits for the XPS have the three drilled out holes in the top with a quick clip and and I always run it off the center one. Yeah, I haven't had I've had more problems uh, with hook sets. And it might be me or it might be just in my head. When I move that quick clip up to the front or the back, the center seems to make it run better. Um, but I have noticed with those things, and this is why we go to a heavier floral, that when you are ripping those up and down, that six inches or so, just a, you know, yeah. quick up and down that, that, that with the, with the fire line, you can feel it. And as soon as it gets fouled up, as yeah. soon as it fouls up, You'll know it. And it, what, what, if you're running that six or eight pound floral, I like going with that 12 to 15 pound, even when I'm running a 10 4 fire line. Um, it just seems like it's a little stiffer or something and you don't get that blade bait spinning up in that center hook catching it. Right. You well, blade baits, had... blade baits do seem to catch the hooks quite a bit. They do. That bigger, yeah. They have that bigger hook in the <clears> yes. front. Yes. Yeah. Um, but you know, the, the one thing we haven't touched on it, but I, I think I'm going to try it in the winter more this uh this year is uh those uh berkeley rip jigs so they i are, tried them a lot last year did better cast them shallow but not in the yeah fall. well and, I, and that's the thing though is i think maybe i do try casting them shallow but you know they've come out with the heavier ones that's the problem is well, they were too light yes and so you can actually get a good you know a good rip on them or, or whatever but but i gotta tell you that we used them um uh up at our championship in august and you know had good success casting and and again when we talked uh and we have talked in previous episodes about what to use for casting these um that's why you do go with the bigger the bigger reel because you cast these bad boys they are a half ounce or three quarters of an ounce i still run a 2500 series but i know you like well, the dude it was, you can almost cast out the entire 2500 series with that jig head now <laughs> i mean it, i was like you know it just goes forever and so no nope. here let's just sh- <laughs> a little slice of ham. <laughs> okay, just, continue. Pop. Yeah, so, anyway, uh, where was I? I got, um, I got one coming here pretty soon. I'll let you know. <laughs> we'll give it another pause. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, that really, I think that I just haven't given them with that softer plastic. I just wonder if I don't know. Maybe in the wintertime it'll be because this is the first year I've had them. Uh, a set of them. The a set of them in, in in the winter. And so let's let's see. I mean, I don't know. Well, well, you know, I'll tell you. I've only had the lighter ones because they just came out with the heavier ones, and I had, I, I didn't have much success trying to deeper you can't vertical. Do them vertical. Yeah, you no. can't do them. Now, it just didn't work. Not heavy enough. No, the new ones work. you can. But okay. again, hold on, hold on. Hold yeah. On. Hold on. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, Crash. But the thing to <laughs> remember with the commercials. Bush. Yeah, right. <laughs> that takes it back. It's not a bush, it's Bud Light, but yeah. Bush. yeah. <laughs> and we don't get anything from Bud Light. Um, but it would be a, um, I don't know. I think it'll be interesting to see because we haven't used those vertical either. And, but, but something to keep in mind with those, very important that that is definitely one of those jigs where you don't want to get too aggressive with it. If you get too aggressive with it, it does not seem to produce as if you do. It doesn't like to be aggressive. Sharp. The sharper, smaller, um, you know. So when we were fishing them, now this was more summertime and cast them, and they worked really good. If we got, if you start pulling those fast, even on a straight retrieve, you know, like you're popping it, popping mm-hmm. it, and you're straight retrieving it, they the blades on the back of them end up turning that bait. It does, it just mm-hmm. screws them up. They're made, as far as I'm concerned, they're made to fish slower. I mean, that's when they really work the to best. to let the the weight of it just dropping through the water give it its give action. it its glide. Yeah. yeah. Well, and it yeah, I mean, and it you it, it's you know you see I don't know if that's what that. well you see people work the shiver for instance, and it's mm-hmm. three big snaps like you know like ten to two kind of you know crazy snap kind of thing, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, <clears throat> I don't think you can do that with these. I mean, no I've way. tried it. Try, I've tried you, to fish it like a it, shiver. You don't. It don't. spins out. It just doesn't it's look right, and then weird, it falls yeah. weird. I but if you just do a quick pop, um, yeah. you know, it is much more effective. So mm-hmm. just something to keep in mind. But I really do think, you know, you put on that heavier head in a three-inch gulp or uh, something like that. I Boy, it's got this well, really and me and you action. have done this too. Uh, and this, if you're fishing a spinning rod, because so, it's harder to fish to it, especially if you're working a break to where mm-hmm. you're always letting up line ring and that. But 
is me and you, Josh, it was last year, the year before, year. we started doing drop shots on one yeah. mm-hmm. and fishing. Uh, we were fishing blade baits. Weren't we fishing blade baits? No, you had the puppet. That's when we really That's started right. hammering the puppet. That's right. I was using the puppet, and I was just killing them yeah. out, out fishing the jigging wraps. Like four to one, yeah, five was, to one. Yeah, it was different color. Or no, no, it was the really same just color pattern. Just action. the action. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yep. Yep. it was crazy. Hang on, I'm and, writing this down. Yeah, right. and then, <laughs> but we we were catching our dead stick was a drop shot. Drop shot with a, a, a one of the gulp, you know, and um, and a, a probably a size two drop shot hook, and um. Boy, it got to the point where I I quit doing the you know, and it's all vertical, right? So mm-hmm. this is definitely. It was a weird though. Jigging. It was mostly smallies. Mostly, yeah. It was funny because I could fish. I was picking up walleyes. Picking walleyes right next to me, but I was getting so I was getting bit so much I stopped fishing the um, jigging wraps, and I just did the the drop shot. Mm-hmm. And Brad was doing the puppet. Brad was catching the walleyes, and I was hammering the smallmouth. Yeah, it was crazy. <laughs> Same spot. Right, I mean, it was. Just, I mean, we were two like, foot of. I mean, just the different species preferred I, it, it, it different was, presentation. But, uh, and then I did get you know while I here while I there, but uh, the smallmouth really you know lit up on that drop shot and good good sized ones too. So mm-hmm. it was very uh, it was really interesting. But yeah, I mean, when you're talking about presentations, don't overlook the drop shot. I, it's a good di- it dead just, stick. Really was, and 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 I just using gave it little, and I do like using uh, spinning reel for that that presentation, yes. but. Just little, little, real little action with. Well, the remember my drop shot. I put it in a rod holder because I'm yeah. uh, actively working, and just a little bit of rocking from the boat and yep. take it's, off and smell. Mm-hmm. Like, yep, the ways mm-hmm. of the uh, the people going by and stuff. We were giving enough action, just getting yeah, and it was uh, it was pretty effective. So so yeah, that was definitely a good one. Well, let's talk since we brought that up with boats. Let's talk about boat control. Let's talk about where we're gonna, you know, boat control in a vertical presentation is super important. It's super important. It is. I mean, and, and you call it vertical, right? So straight up and down. Yeah. But so what you want to do, um, if, you, if you're if you on a honey hole or you're, you've are you really found a pod that's active, stay straight on, to, on top of them and just yep. work them from all over different parts of the boat. Yep. But if you are fishing a structure of area like that road bed that I'm mm-hmm. talking about, the break, and you have little pockets, you, you, you want to be able to move up and down that a little bit really slow and... Point two is probably preferable. If you get up to point three, you're starting to push it a little bit because uh, you start getting to your your line starts getting too past vertical. Yeah. Um, ways to correct that a little bit too is slow your boat down to try to keep it at point one, point two, right? But if you if the wind is just right and you, you you're having a hard time keeping it at that point two and you start bumping up a little bit, that's when you have to step up to a little bit heavier jig and wrap or mm-hmm. a little bit heavier jig. Uh, because you still want to keep it vertical. Because what what you're doing, I I think when we're really fishing, uh, the boat control is so so important when you find these b- pods of fish or that break or that bottom. You're fishing right next to a break to try to stay on that. Well, a so couple feet either side, you're off the fish. So if you if you end up having your line at a twenty or thirty degree angle out, you're you're not fishing that no. structure. You're, well, you're, you're not fish- fishing what you see on your ground. Yes, you're fishing way off of it. And the fish, the active fish, you want to stay in the groups and pods of fish because they'll stack up right, right under you. You know, yep. now I know the cone pattern when, when you're in 30 feet of water, you got quite a cone pattern, right? right? But when you're using the side imaging and stuff, you can really start dialing in to stay on that structure. You're fishing, you're fishing that area because you're finding fish there. But what you really need to concentrate on is if those fish are relating to that break or to that hump sure. or to whatever is being able to stay on that yeah. and, right. and know that the fish are there because you're seeing them on your, on your graph. Yeah. But to be able to stay exactly in 27 feet of water. And if I go to 26 and a half, whoop, start to creep up. You got to get back sure. down because that's what you're actively fishing when you're fishing that one foot, you know, jig, when yeah. you're jigging it up six, in, six, 10 inches, whatever it is that mm. you're fishing that 27 feet, not 26. You're fishing the 27 because they're all relating to that. And that doesn't mean you're not going to catch them at 26, but that's how critical boat control I think is in this in speed. I, well, I'm telling you right now, there's there's two things. One thing that you have to have and another that I think you have to have. But, um, you know, Brad fishes out of aluminum. I fish out of a glass. I think the glass boats, uh, when you're vertical fishing, have 
major advantage. It's a hundred percent. Oh major yeah. Advantage. 100%. yeah. It's like standing on the end of your dock, especially, mm-hmm. especially if there's wind over 10. I mean, I can fish and, and boat traffic. Let's say you get boat traffic on top of it. Yeah. The, the thing is, is usually in the fall, the boat traffic is a little bit lighter. Yeah, so, I mean, it on that's, on a, on a it's nice usually, day. yeah, I understand exactly what you're saying. Cause yeah. I feel it way more in my boat than you do in yours, yeah. but it's usually fewer and far between. If you're fish, if you're doing this in May and everybody's out there yeah. water skiing, you're fighting it all the time. If you have to fight it every couple of minutes because a boat's going by, it's not a big as issue. Right. But if it's windy, yep. um, the uh, fiberglass boats, there's, there's no comparison uh-uh. for that. I can fish. Pretty much all the same stuff that you do in a fiberglass boat, but when I have to just really pinpoint structure and really stay on that structure, Mm -hmm. if there's more than, if it's 13 and under, I'm usually good if we're pulling at something like 0.4, 0.5, 0.6. But when I have to drop it down to 0.2, I got to have that wind around eight or lower because I really start get I slide off by a couple feet where you can hold right Mm -hmm. on it. Yeah, and, and the other thing is too is you got to have good, good electronics. You got to have you, you really. This is where you know investing in some electronics is is worth it because, um, it, it, I mean, it is. How many times have we seen that where it is a, a, a notch on the bottom, and who only knows what that is, right? Is it a little little shelf? Is it a little rock shelf? Is it a place where, um, you know. Something was submerged and it's someone lose their hat. Whatever. Yeah, I mean, who knows, <laughs> right? <laughs> Seriously, we I don't mean, know. Yeah, who knows? But it, it, uh, it, it, if you have that on that graph, and you have, you know, of course, the GPS is a must because you can mark where those little spots are. Mm-hmm. Uh, it makes all the difference in the world. I mean, we have a, a little spot that we fish, um, and it's around kind of a, just a little sunken hump, right? You know, but if you are on the wrong side of that hump. You're not catching fish, mm-hmm. right? They they just do not seem to like the that's less deeper. deep side that's of the a, that, yeah. Right? It, that's a deeper and yeah. uh, and but it's interesting because but a graph is just a must, right? A good a good solid one. You know, not all of them on the boat have to be great. If you have more than one, but one really solid one to be able to hold the boat where you need it to be is crucial. I um, think I think um, I agree with you, but I think the GPS is is super important on that too because. Uh, I, I know that me and Mitch have got better at this over the years of when we mark a small piece of structure that's like the size of a kitchen table. I mean, it's small. And when you're talking a body of water yeah. and there's fish hunkered on it, yeah. we, we hit the waypoint on top of it. Right. But then I think the key is, is in zoom in. Zoom yeah, I was, in. <laughs> that's yeah. funny. We, we sure have fished a lot together because the whole time he's saying this, I'm like, well, yeah. And tell them how you got to zoom in. <laughs> yeah, no, because <laughs> yeah. if you just leave it there, you're going to be, I mean, if you just leave it where you're just normal cruising around looking at your, your, your contour lines and right, things yeah. like that, which is perfect if you're just getting to an area. But the waypoint thing, it's it, huge. It, it happened to us in a tournament. We, we yes. marked a waypoint. We, you know, swung around after we made our little pass jigging no. and we whipped around, came back on it and we're right on it. And, huh, that passed nothing. And we're, well, we're it's like, it's like, different depth. That? It's like a foot yeah. deeper. Well, What's going on here? Yeah. And then zoomed in. Oh yeah. We were probably two boat lengths off our, yes. our GPS. Mark. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And, and, you know, um, it's, it's funny cause, uh, I'm thinking about you saying that, like zooming in and all that stuff. The other, yeah. I guess I'm trying to I'm trying to think the best way to describe this. The other uh, biggest thing is is when you you guys are terrible. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Don't be gassing in here. Yeah, <laughs> um, is, it, it, it's it, not that big. <laughs> <laughs> um, it is you you zoom in and and this is where the XI five I think is a big advantage over the Minn Kota's is because it is that spot lock on that motor guide is so precise and especially when you run mm-hmm. if you run Lorance with the puck um i have the 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 five on the front the puck is on the back it, between the two it just keeps that boat <laughs> i mean right dead nuts on and, and and do you remember brad when we were in michigan and we were fishing that um that deep the, the it's almost like an ocean channel right so we were we were pretty far out we were by the um the the, by the lighthouse area no when we were over by uh ford river and we were on by the navigation oh, yeah, yeah. Buoy, yeah, right? I know you're and, talking about and the waves were were pretty pretty big that day i mean they were solid rollers and um but we had all those fish stacked up on the edge of the channel and the channel was deeper um and we were like man we have to see what those fish are because 
up on the flat, you know, you come up the channel, up up the break, and, you know, that's where we would troll cranks and get fish here and there. But at the base, they were just stacked. I mean, big arches. Um, and some people that we knew were like, hey, man, we vertical jigged that and uh, got a 10-pounder out of there. So, you know, we need to we need to see. So, Brandon, I'm like, all right, well, let's do it. <clears throat> so, we go and we sit on this well. The, the wind's pushing us in up the thing and you had to stay right at the base right at where the channel was and uh we were fishing jigging wraps and um and getting them trying to get them down there and it wasn't super deep i mean it was like what 40 45 something like that i mean it wasn't out of control deep um but big ways and that motor guy locked us right on on that edge the yep. whole time well and, you know I, so big that it's coming out of the water in the front as the as the waves roll past mm-hmm. you but God, it was it was dead nuts on, and we stayed right there and vertical vertical fished it. So the boat control was beyond crucial uh, on that. So one of the things that me and Mitch have to do because we both run aluminum boats, and I have the PV two, so I don't even have the Tarova. And you know, I've it has you know your autopilot, it has all the stuff I need on it, but and it's a twenty four volt system, it works fine. But when I start getting into wind or gusts, um, I take it off of autopilot. And the cruise, mm-hmm. this because as like a cruise control, I can set the speed at like 0.4 and it'll just take me a 0.4, 0.2, 0.7. Right. It stays really relative to that. But the problem, and I don't know if the XI5 has this issue, I'm assuming it does because it's still working off GPS waypoints on how fast it gets to you for the motor to make the adjustment. I can make the adjustment way faster than that trolling motor can when it's trying to lock into, like, if I do a spot lock on a thing. And well, I, I got and, that puck though. That changes that. Yeah, it could. The, puck, I, I, I the puck's on the back, so I've got the GPS off the the motor guy in the front, and then I've got the puck off the GPS off the Lorenz in the back. So between the two, but Mitch, you know what I'm talking about. I, what he's talking about is like when when you first got your boat, mm-hmm. your new boat. <clears throat> you know, we'd always run foot pads, foot yeah. controls, and you know you're doing it all. Right. You know, controlling the speed, everything. Well, and I'm pretty good at it. I that, that's I, that's why I still have on my uh, boat. Well, um when Brad got that that spot lock, it was it was cool. Yeah. But and we're sitting there right on a spot and you're laughing like, "Yeah, hey, we don't even have to think about it. We just sit here and fish." And then all of a sudden, you know, a gust of wind comes and it blows you off. Yeah. And then the motor, you know, catches back up and brings you back. Or well, then or it then overshoots it, you yeah, because yeah. it speeds up too much. Yes. It wants to get you back there, and then it's turning around. It's all like, well, Geez. especially when the wind's you know blowing yeah. you side to side, yeah. it, it overcorrects and stuff. And that first couple times out with it, I was like, "Well, oh, that's cool and stuff," but I like my I like to control it because yeah. I can see that gust of wind coming. Sure. I can see the it. big boat and the waves coming, and I can I'll I'll pick up the speed before it even comes and. I will stay right there. Mm-hmm. But, and it was almost even kind of frustrating. Like, oh man, this is cool, but I sure do hate it when it blows us off and takes a, you know, a, a minute or whatever to get yeah. back on it and make that adjustment. It, I mean, it still is awesome. Yeah. But that is the one time that, mm-hmm. is, that I would so wish the guys, it was faster. The guys that are running aluminum boats, so that's what you have. That's what you have. Yeah. Yeah. But I think it's easier, like we talked about, to, to switch it to manual and you keep yourself on them. Sure. That mm-hmm. one thing that the spot lock, uh, works good, really good is when you're casting shorelines because you can just pull up 30 yards from shore, whoop, yeah. lock it, and you're casting all over. Right. So it doesn't matter if it's catching up a couple feet. Yeah, here like the seven, eight feet off the Big spot. Big deal because yeah. I'm casting. I think that's the difference but vertical between, jigging. The, between the Minn Kota and the motor guide is I, I do not have that issue. I think it has to do more with fiberglass because your boat just. Yeah. You know, there. like, like, like I'm for I us sit up our, so high. Yeah. yeah our, us and our aluminum boats, that gust of wind coming, it will blow me yeah. off my spot where you don't even pay attention no, to it. No. Mm-hmm. Well, and, and, yeah. I, and I'll give you another example. So when we go family fun day, right? I, I'm so confident in that motor guide that we go into, you know, big cove or something and everybody's swimming off around the boat. I put that sucker down. I put it on spot lock. And I don't think about it the rest of the day. We're we're all jumping off. The boat is by itself, right? We're all jumping off. We're I doing do our same. thing. Yeah, but it doesn't move. I mean, we'll you know sometimes you get tight, right? Like you're next to another boat or something. I, wind, rain, you know, other boats coming in, whatever. I don't even don't even flinch. I mean, it's, well, it's on the that family fun days, if it has to, if it has to correct itself back a couple feet. I mean, I've done the same thing, yeah. but it, it, there's definitely an advantage to the fiberglass. Mm-hmm. And I think you could have that argument uh, versus the Minn Kota or the motor guide. There's guys that are true motor guy fans, right. true Minn Kota fans, and they both, both make a great product. But the thing is that you have to have a 24-volt system or bigger. 
Yeah. You have to. Oh yeah. With enough yeah. thrust too. Yeah. You can't can't be running stuff. You have out to there. have a long shaft. Yeah. You, you know, I, I have so mine to the thirty six. But if you well, yeah, because if it comes out of the water group, it's Yeah, ridiculous. so you're probably running a mm-hmm. sixty, seventy two inch shaft or something like it, that. Yeah, I think it's um I think it's the the seventy two and it's the thirty six volt and it you know, and it I mean I love it. I yeah. I, I you, yeah, it's great. It is good. Yeah, I'm I mean, not going to argue with you. And it. we've had, you know, there there were issues when it first came out. I think it was the motor talking to the Lowrance because it's all tied in. Mm-hmm. Um, where we it would do what we call crazy motor, right? You'd be going, and all of a sudden, you just hear it <laughs> crank up and go. And you're like, oh, well, I didn't touch it. What's it doing, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. So that used to freak us out a little. But um, they've done some software updates with Lowrance, and I haven't had that issue in probably four or five years so yeah. um but i i just i did have the same mincota that you have on mm-hmm. my old boat and it was aluminum and i liked it it did great i got the longer shaft i had the 24 volt system especially I, if you're running a lot i mean you should go with the longest shaft that you can because yeah. you can always raise it up you can't yeah. add on you can't on add on to it and, and if you're running it. an aluminum boat that sets up a little bit higher you want that thing digging in the water yep. oh yeah if especially when you got some big waves you'll lose your spot well, real quick when the, it, when the prop your, comes out of the yeah, water yeah but i lose your spot but if you're fishing vertical uh and i would fish vertical probably you know 20 feet offshore right so it's you know it's two boat lengths to get to the shore but it's far enough off well we'd have those boats those big boats go right by us i mean those a holes on the you know on the, on the weekends especially when we do these tournaments i'm fishing a break and i'm not far from shore and all of a sudden that big boat goes by and i'm i'm on these you know three and a half four foot you know swells and the motor's coming out, the, the electric isn't long enough shaft, the motor's coming out of the water, it's underpowered. Before you know it, I'm jumping out in, you know, chest deep keep water. Keep it from pushing, the going to the rocks. Keep it from going up on the shore <laughs> because some asshole came so close to me. Mm-hmm. So uh, I, after that, and I'll never forget that day, I was like, that's it, I'm done. You, you know? got to go with longer shaft. Oh, I, yep. I was like, I called my wife. I said, I'm putting it on the credit card. I don't care what, you know, whatever it is. I said, but I, so I went, I got a... a I went, you know, to the 24 volt system because I only had a 12 and I went from a, a shorter foot pedal, you know, bass style electric to uh, the long, long shaft, uh, the, the mm-hmm. V2. And, and I loved it on that boat. On this boat, definitely the motor guide is the, is the yeah. way to go. So, um, and I am, mm. it's just worked so well for me. Plus I love having that remote and being able when we troll to use it like you know like the four wheel drive right i mean i use oh the yeah crap out of it and it's just yeah, that was the other thing so when brad got his boat it had the hand control mm-hmm. and, and everything and i didn't like that either i'm like you know because a lot of times out here in colorado we get to fish with two rods so you know when you're fishing two right. rods i can fish all day long and use my foot to control the boat and all of a sudden boom you know and, and then <coughs> brad's running it so it's yeah. not like it's bothering me that yeah. he has to reach up all the time and hit that remote but i was just like god dang, that sucks you yeah. know it's what a, what a pain in the ass he's making adjustments and so he's got to reach up and do that and you, what do you do with your other hand and yeah i've kind of changed all that just and, and a lot of it you know hey you spot lock if you're vertical jigging so you're not making adjustments mm-hmm. very often but oh it is awesome right. when, when when we are in, doing trolling applications yeah uh, or that. bottom bouncing yeah, yeah. bottom bouncing in, in moving the boat and yeah. and needing to steer and stuff with it oh that that's you, you got to give go. these, you got to give these guys a visual though as they're listening to you describe this you guys have to understand that mitch is actually in the front of the boat by the motor but brad's in the back operating it and telling it where to go so mitch is up there fishing away both hands <laughs> yeah. and brad both is hands. in the one using i'm the busy and, and, and he's constantly like looking around me trying to or, or pointing at the i can't see where it's pointed. it's pointed yeah so mitch is in the front telling him where to go fishing away <laughs> brad's in the back trying to make the remote work and everything go yeah. <laughs> so but but it is i mean those are big tools those are take, big things we take over. me over there yeah bitch. yeah get over there <laughs> spot lock i said spot lock. <laughs> spot lock. Yeah, but where's you know, the meatloaf yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got the cheese back there um but it, I, that those are big things right those are it, like yeah. if you're gonna be a successful vertical fisherman those are the things so now let's talk real quick because we're starting to run out of time but i want to get to um, breaking down a piece of structure when you're vertically jigging, because I think, um, it's real important for, for, uh, me at personally, and people have different variations on this, but I like to fish. If I'm going to fish a spot, I like to fish the east side of the spot in the morning because it gets the sun first and the west side of the spot in the afternoon, just because it's going to warm up this time of year. Water temperature is crucial, right? You know what? I- how much it warms up, how much it doesn't. Some guys like to fish the shadow. 
part, mm-hmm. right? So if you fish rock, they like to fish on the shadow side of the rock. You know, I'll be honest with you. I, I, I've heard you talk about this, and um, I think it has. It, it's more applicable in uh, summer fishing or when that sun is coming up and you're fishing a shadow shoreline. Mm-hmm. Uh, not necessarily if I'm vertical jigging um in the fall i i don't i don't notice it that much i'm more focused on finding that structure that's holding fish because it's usually pretty small little area Mm -hmm. of just staying on top of those fish and working them at point two point three not trying to stay on one side of them but Mm -hmm. in the in the summer uh even late spring that definitely for us plays into it quite a bit we Mm -hmm. choose a lot of locations when we start you know, breaking down water and we like, okay, I mean, you always got to have a plan C, right. but if you, if you go out there, okay, we got six different locations that we have marked fish or that we've caught fish at that we figured out the presentation. We want to go back to those. Yeah. If it's between a couple that have been really producing nine times out of 10, we're going to pick the spot that's going to be on the shadow side in the morning. Wouldn't you guess? Wouldn't you? Agree? Yeah. Yeah. When you were bringing this up, mm-hmm. um, I never look at it as a temp thing, but I've, I've, I think of sh- the, the brightness or darkness, you know, sh- yeah. shadows way more than I've ever thought of like, oh, that, that side's going to warm up fast mm-hmm. or anything. You know, when the, when the sun's coming up in the morning, we'll say, and it's on one side of the structure versus the other, you know, th- that's all changing pretty quickly. Well, sure. I, th- I think the, the light is changing a lot faster than the water temp. Mm-hmm. So that's why I, I put more, cause I like that theory. Mm-hmm. And I, I be honest with you, I can't really tell if, I've caught more fish, you know, trying to focus on that versus mm-hmm. just, oh, I'm on fish on this side. Right. <laughs> I no, don't I, care where the sun is. This is where the fish I, are. I do agree when you end up, it's a little bit off topic, but when you start trolling is finding that warmer water to troll where you're going to mm-hmm. still find those balls of bait fish for sure. Right. But for vertical jigging in the fall, I, 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 I'll be honest, I don't pay attention to that. I'm more focused on um, the location that I'm at and what that brings, whether I'm going to be doing a, a some sort of glide bait, whether I'm going to be doing, a, mm-hmm. uh, you know, a whatever, right? You know, um, or if I have to step up a little heavier because it ends up being a little bit deeper, right? The way I, I'm, I'm more about, I, I focus more on boat control on that structure than I do what that the sun is doing to mm-hmm. that structure on the bottom. Well, it's fine fish time. I mean, that's what it, mm-hmm. it is, right? Uh, uh, I think if, um, my idea in saying that is it helps you to give you a starting point and then you, you have to find the fish though. I mean, we're not fishing dead water. You can't fish dead water when you vertical jig. It's, it's a waste of time because you're not, you're not covering. Right. Mm-hmm. So, um, so yeah, I mean, it is one of those things where you do go and, and look for, um, you know, if you're fishing, let's say big rocks, let's say some place that's a rock slide or whatever, maybe you fish, on one side of the rock slide as opposed to the other, as opposed to the middle, you know, mm-hmm. um, or if it's um, where rock meets sand and you've got that transition, well, do you fish the transition in the morning or, you know, because sometimes if you vertically jig right on that transition, I mean, right where it hits, there will be a line of fish stacked up. You get in the sand part, which is going to be warmer, mm, probably won't catch many fish. Get in the rock part, probably a little cooler, probably not as many fish. But right on that transition piece, they seem mm-hmm. to, you know, so that's where vertical really comes in is you have to get precise, but you have to use those electronics and you have to get right on them. Mm-hmm. And then that, and then you can very slowly, like we do move back and forth, right? You know, you're like, mm-hmm. okay, is it, it the way the structure is laid out? Is it towards shore and out or is it parallel with shore? Well, I think it's key when we're in, and we've touched a little bit on location, but I want to, I want to ask you guys this question too, on location when we're talking about that. So. If we are uh, fishing a bowl or fishing an area to where we found fish, let's say, in 35 feet of water, mm-hmm. you, you move off of it and it goes down to 50, you move the other way and it goes up to 22, and you're really finding those fish in 30 feet, 35, yeah. whatever it is. Um, I think it's crucial to, especially once you find the fish in that location, is to try to mirror that, uh, mirror that location throughout your run. Um, if you have to stay vertical on them, great. But with a fish are sliding in and out. Now, what I'm going to do is if I am moving at that point to and going, uh, going through that saddle, I'm still looking for those fish 
in that 30, 35. I'm going to stay in that because that's where I was actively catching fish. Right. If I, if I move back and I go down a hundred yards and now all of a sudden it's went up to 15 or 18, 20, whatever, it's a big break and I'm no longer in that bowl. I come back around, go back to where I was at. If they're not there, then I start searching that location because typically they haven't moved a long ways. Maybe they slid down to 42 and then I start working the 42 foot water. Sure. I think the location is key. Um, but keeping in that location where you find active fish. Yeah. You know yeah, well, I mean? and I, and I want to bring up something real quick and you, you touched on it and I, I, it flashed through my mind and then I didn't bring it up, but the zooming piece is very important because, um, a lot of times uh, as we start to move through this fall towards that summer, just before ice, um, and, I mean, not summer, winter, just say before what? ice. Yeah. It's like, I'm confused. Yeah. yeah. I'm confused. <laughs> no, the winter, right Have another and, and granted that the, you know, the Midwest guys, you're going to hit ice here. Mm, we may or may not get ice, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so we can may or may not be able to fish all winter. But um, when you zoom in, those fish will be belly to the bottom. So it's really important that you do zoom in so you can start to see mm -hmm. What looks not like just a, on your GPS, yeah. oh, you're talking on your graph. Uh, yeah. Oh and, yeah. Well, and and on the um, you know, your your structure scan because yes, um, it will look like a small hump on the bottom, right? Like a little hump. It there's no. There's nothing that shows any difference, right? There's no color change on your graph, nothing. But when you zoom in, all of a sudden you start to see a little bit more of a change in the hump. You or you see a little, little bit of separation. And so the same way with your, your mm -hmm. structure scan. Oh, that's a white dot right on the bottom, but it's a dot that is definitely independent of the bottom. Mm -hmm. That's probably a fish. Because how many times have we fished, especially if you get a, a flat, a little bit of a flat off a, off a drop, um, where we're like, God, it doesn't look like there's fish out here, but we're doing jigging wraps. We're moving real slow and we're hammering fish. We zoom in and now it looks like there's just a bunch of little bumps on the bottom. Well, every one of those little bumps is a fish that is just belly to the bottom. Just laying there. So you have to really know how to, to read that graph and look for it because, um, I mean, you go right over fish and not even know. It. Well, this is a perfect time of year to really get familiar with your graph. Yeah. You know, it really is. Right. Uh, because when you get into the fish, I mean, you can really put a per put a pounding on them. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah, they're biting. But I'm telling you, it's not like uh, a Lindy rig day where you can have a hundred fish day, uh, you know, and you just know they're out on this flat. Right. They're just going to be anywhere right. you drift on this flat. Right. You're going to see an arch here, an arch there. But as soon I mean, as you go over them, there'll be five or six arches there. Yeah. And I mean, another 20, 30 feet, five or six more. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it's really good time to get familiar with your graph, your zoom features, your GPS zoom yep. features to be able to know what that looks like and to be able to repeat what you're seeing. Even if you have that one fish that you've seen belly to the bottom, hmm, that fish is at 38 feet. I don't get that fish to go, but now I'm going to start looking at 38 yeah. feet in that general area because I might find a pot of four or five. Sure. Right. You know Absolutely. what I mean? So it's a good clue to really start looking at your, at your graph and getting better at it because it's intimidating. There's a lot of stuff on, 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 like we all run Lorance. There's a lot of functions on that thing oh, that can be overwhelming. Well, yeah. And, and if you mess it up, you, you're like, how do I get it back? What did I just right. do? Yes. And, and worse and, than running Microsoft. It, yeah. Jeez. But yeah. I'm telling you that it's a great time to get out on the water and actively figure out your graph, really get comfortable with it. Yep. And then when you start finding fish, being able to re replicate that because yep. it's going to pay dividends too. Yeah. Later on, oh, every summer. time around, yeah, yeah, when yeah. you're out on the water later yeah. on. But if you if you do if you do get out on the water and you're in a situation where the wind comes up, or boat traffic wherever it may be, because some of these places you know they're maybe down south a little more like our Texas guys and stuff. Um, you, it's important to remember that you can vertical is meant to be vertical, and that even the slightest bit of movement that that you have not accounted for or planned for. Or, or try to counter with your electronics and your motors and stuff can screw up a bite. I mean, can just absolutely screw up a bite. And so sometimes like uh, the spoons, you try to run a spoon at a 45, you know, whatever, you're going to just be pulling lead through the water all day, not catching any fish. Mm -hmm. So it's real important to keep the spoon vertical, right? Yep. It's real important to get that up straight up and down drop. As close um, to it as possible. Yeah. And so, so just, Keep that in mind as we're talking boat control and electronics and all of that and sitting on structure that it is important that when you find that side of the structure where the boat is, you that's where you go. No. I mean, that's, you know, keep it vertical. You do your thing. You do your spot locks. You do whatever. So. Yeah. 
A lot of good stuff. Hey, I appreciate it. Hey, you're talking a little bit about Lawrence, go back and check out our our next level with uh, Dan Swanson. He's a Lawrence like guru. I mean, the guru. Guy, yeah, dude, yeah, yeah. he knows He's been pro more staff about Lawrence forever. Yes. So if you have some questions on it too, make sure you're hitting us up at all eyes on fishing at gmail.com. We will get your answer, your, your answers or your questions answered. Holy and if yeah. we don't, if we don't know it, we can reach out to Dan. Yeah, Dan's absolutely. awesome at that. Yeah. And, yeah. and it might take a little bit of time, but we do appreciate everybody, uh, listening to us on the next level. Make sure you're getting it out to your buddies and, and, and having them join in and also follow on our regular podcast too. Yeah. Hit us up at our, at, at all eyes on fishing at gmail.com. And I know a lot of guys have bought apparel and things from us, but all eyes on fishing.com. Um, we have a whole apparel section. So check that out. And one thing cool, and I'll bring it up is. You guys are all this next level of, of subscribe to that. We appreciate, uh, you doing that so we can, you know, be able to do this because it's, it takes a little bit to do it. But there's also, we just got some guys Venmo on us some stuff. So yeah, that's pretty cool. We, we do like, uh, uh, any kind of contribution, it helps us stay in the game, keep, keep doing stuff. We do appreciate that. So if you, if you're able to do that, great. But from all of us at All Eyes on Fishing, we do appreciate it. Have a good one. This has been All Eyes on Fishing. Thanks for listening. If you like what you heard, go ahead and subscribe to The Next Level. And you can hear longer podcasts and more information on all of your favorite topics. And check us out at alleyesonfishing.com for apparel, blogs, and other information. Don't forget to check us out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. All Eyes on Fishing, leading you to the next level.